We had already reported that the indigenous air independent propulsion system was scheduled to begin its trial in the first quarter of 2021, and latest reports indicate that the DRDO developed prototype of air independent propulsion system has successfully demonstrated 14 days of continuous operation, which marks a crucial step towards its usage in Scorpion submarines to boost operational capabilities. The first Scorpion submarine INS Calvary will be the first to be integrated with the indigenous AIP systems in 2024 during its first refit. That will be followed by the remaining five Scorpion submarines. The American aircraft manufacturer Boeing has announced that it has received a license from the US government to market the F-15 EX in India. Boeing will make presentations on the twin-engine fighter jet to the Indian Air Force and Defence Ministry officials at the upcoming Aero India 2021, and Boeing has said that it has already fielded the F-A-18 Super Hornet in the contest, but will eventually offer only one of the two aircraft in the MMRCA contest. The weapons package of the F-15EX could include the 200 km range AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, and is equipped with the latest APG-82 ASA radar that has more than 2,000 transmitter and receiver modules, and the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability Electronic Warfare and Threat Identification System. After flying over 7,000 km from France, the third batch of three Rafale fighter jets had landed in India last night, and this delivery takes the number of Rafale fighters in the Indian Air Force's inventory to 11. Another batch of three fighters will arrive in March, followed by seven more in April, which would take the total number of fighters delivered to the Indian Air Force to 21, while the induction of all 36 Rafale jets will be completed by 2023. France had recently offered to transfer 70% of the Rafale production to India, and the Indian Air Force is confident to get the acceptance of necessity for procuring 114 new fighters with local production by April 2021, which will clear the way for the official tendering process to begin. The Kalyani Center for Technology and Innovation will be showcasing two indigenously developed gas turbine engines at the Aero India 2021, and both 120 kg force and 160 kg force gas turbine engines have been tested and achieved their technical benchmark, and the private sector company will now offer the engines to DRDO and export customers to power unmanned aerial vehicle target drones and gliders. Interestingly, the Defence Ministry's 101 list of banned items also includes ban on the import of small jet engines with 120 kg force. The company plans to develop a 250, 350 and 450 kg force turbojet engine that can be used on long-ranged cruise missiles, light helicopters and light aircraft with twin-engine configuration. The Defence Minister will formally sign the 48,000 crore rupees contract for 83 Tejas Mark 1A fighters on 3rd February, along with a 3,000 crore order for 15 light combat helicopters, while the military version of the light utility helicopter will get its initial operational clearance at the upcoming Aero India 2021. The Defence Minister will also inaugurate the 3rd Tejas assembly line in Bangalore on 2nd February, that will be dedicated for producing 18 Tejas Mark 1 trainers, and it will cater to export orders in the future. Rolls-Royce has offered its MT-30 marine gas turbine engine under the Make in India initiative, and it will be showcased at the Aero India 2021, which is the world's most power-dense marine gas turbine for naval vessels. It offers a superior power-to-weight ratio, and generates around 40 megawatt power, and can propel the Indian Navy's modernization program by providing integrated power and propulsion solutions. It has been built with 50% fewer parts than other aero-derived gas turbines, that will help to minimize maintenance costs. 
The Japanese Prime Minister has raised concerns about the British proposal to invite Australia, India and South Korea to a meeting of group of seven foreign ministers, and have them sign up to a joint charter with the forum. He also argued that the aim of the summit should be to rebuild the G7 after a difficult year, and not institutionalize a relationship with the invited guests. France, Italy and Germany also hold similar views, and they feel that UK is attempting to reshape the G7, by establishing a coalition of 10 leading democracies to counter China and other authoritarian states. During his first telephonic conversation with Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, the newly appointed Defence Secretary retired General Lloyd Austin has said, that he looked forward to the next 2 plus 2 dialogue between the two countries in Washington DC, and he assured that his government's relationship with India on defense issues will remain strong, and China figured in the talks in the larger context of geopolitical developments. National Security Advisor Rajit Doval also held a telephonic conversation with his American counterpart Jake Sullivan, to advance India-US strategic and security interests. Oh, my God.